welcome to part two on the first registration of unregistered land. In my previous video, I explained how to investigate title to unregistered land and the scenario we used was the freehold land of the late George One Love Road, subject to a lease of five years, which is being transferred by Alan and Bob, the executors, to Mark and Anne, the beneficiaries, who will hold the property as tenants in common in equal shares. An application for first registration must always be made in Form FR1. The form, as all of the forms for first registration, can be downloaded from gov.uk. The FR1 form contains 17 panels for completion, but I will only explain the ones that may cause confusion. I would like to also add that not all of the panels must be completed, and this will most likely depend on the instructions from your client and the title documents. It is an easy one, but also an easy one to forget about until you have to fill out the form. The fee for first registration is payable on the basis of the full current market value of the property. Often clients do not know this, so to save yourself the embarrassment of calling your client at the very last minute and asking them about the current value, make sure that as soon as you are instructed that you have that figure. In our scenario, we have the executors assenting the property to the beneficiaries and the executors will need to give us the figure to calculate the land registry fee. You will need to use scale one, which you will find in the land registry guidance on registration and service fees on gov.uk. When the applicant is more than one person, in our scenario is the beneficiaries, Mark and Anne, we must tell the land registry how the applicant will be holding the property when the transfer is completed. Our instructions are that Anne and Mark will hold the property as tenants in common in equal shares and the four box two must be ticked. Upon registration, the registrar will enter a Form A restriction on the register. The effect of the restriction is that a disposition in future by either Anne or Mark cannot be registered. As we know, disclosable overriding interests are interests to which a property is subject although they are not registered. The full list of disclosable overriding interests can be found in Schedule 1 and 3 of the Land Registration Act 2002. An example of an overriding interest would be the five-year lease that One Love Road is subject to. Conveyances have to disclose overriding interests when making an application for first registration, so using our scenario, the lease would need to be disclosed and therefore panel 11 ticked. Disclosable interests should be disclosed on form DI if they are not apparent from an examination of title leads and documents. By way of an example, if we have come across the low road lease in our deeds packets, there is no need to complete the DI form as a certified copy of this lease will be enclosed with the application. Form FR1 must be accompanied by Form DL in duplicate. Documents that create the chain of ownership must be listed on this form. Conveyances have the option of lodging first registration applications made up of certified copy deeds and documents. So if you want to lodge certified copies, each of the documents must contain an appropriate certification and the land registry accepts the following three. I think they are self-explanatory, but let me emphasize that the land registry is very particular about this wording and is therefore important that you get this right the first time, otherwise your application will get rejected and you will have to certify all of the documents again. Also the certified um, documents cannot be dated more than three months before the application is made. Again, the land registry is very strict about this. In addition, a separate certificate must be lodged with the application. It is called a First Registration Copy Deeds Conveyor Certificate and is available on gov.uk. By lodging this certificate, you are certifying to the land registry that your application is made up of certified copy deeds and documents. If this certificate does not accompany your application, the application may be cancelled or rejected by the land registry. Another thing to bear in mind is that any plans accompanying the application must be full-size color copies and must not be reduced in scale or size from the original. So if your photocopying skills are as great as mine, please ask someone competent to help you with uh, photocopying. 
Also, do not forget to enclose with your application a certified copy of the K17 or K18 form, which I talked about in my previous video. It looks as though that I'm losing the natural light, so I'm just gonna wrap it up. Um, the last thing I would like to draw your attention to is that when you are dealing with personal representatives, uh, like in our scenario, you must use Form AS1 for an assent of a property from per personal representatives to beneficiaries. Um, unlike the forms previously mentioned, um, an assent is a transfer of a, a property and it needs to be signed and witnessed as any other transfer document. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. If there is any other topic you would like me to cover, please leave a comment below and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.